I have a fear that I won't let myself learn. I think we all know by now that I'm known for not speaking the best Spanish. I started the Pocho Concha series so that I could connect with those who felt the same way, but it was also to try to fill that void in me. And it did make me feel better for a little bit, but I knew the only thing that would truly make myself feel better was to just learn. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna learn Spanish. One thing I wanted to know before I started this Spanish journey was why didn't my parents teach me? My parents, they spoke fluent Spanish, they, they still do, but when it came to growing up, they didn't teach us Spanish on a regular basis. And I think it was because they moved us to a predominantly non-Latino area, you know, a middle-class Mexican-American family. They wanted their kids to have equal opportunity with all of the other kids that were in school. So they didn't want us to have accents. They didn't want us to carry what they thought that might be excess baggage that they had growing up. In our family, everybody spoke Spanish. And when it came down to the children, they wanted to prepare us for the, the situation we we're gonna be going into. So, but when we tried to speak Spanish, it was kind of funny to them and then they would- They'd make fun of us. They would laugh yes. and, then, and then we were like, oh, forget that, I'm never gonna speak Spanish. So I wanted to bring my Nani in to talk a little bit about how she brought up her kids, my dad, with Spanish. When I started school, and I didn't know how to ask my teacher to go to the bathroom, so I made pee in my 20s. So I said, if I ever have kids, they're gonna learn English. So that I taught my three kids uh, English first, but I did speak to them in Spanish because my parents spoke Spanish. So how do you feel about me learning Spanish? Well, you knew it, Maya, when you were going to high school, but you just didn't keep at it. I lost it. So there were a lot of reasons why they didn't teach me. I can't dwell on that because it's out of my control. The only thing that I can control right now is how much I want to learn. The first thing I did was search for tutors. I finally found a tutoring company called Stroman Inc and explained to them what I wanted to do and they were down for it. So they set me up with one of their tutors, his name is Yoan. She's third or fourth generation Mexican American and so there's already some kind of underlying connection and lots of structures already built into her mind linguistically. And it becomes easier to teach these people Spanish because they have, they're kind of attuned to it already. Language, in order to learn it, just like, just like when you use it, you have to be very chill. You have to be calm and be receptive to all kinds of things. Class number one was the basics. I already knew how to say a majority of these things, like I am working, I'm hungry, I'm a woman, and uh, oh, actually I got that from Gariel. Just got done with my first class. How did I do? It was good. I've seen all kinds of things over the years, and this was like, this was not bad at all. This okay, was, good. Me. I was really surprised how much I knew. It's, it's so weird because I feel like I'm working out a muscle right now that has not been been active for very long. My challenge is going to be pronouncing things. Porque mi acento es muy mal y largo. Porque... Si, sí, that's all I can, I can't even finish it. After the first couple of classes, I forgot how much I knew. Everything just came back to me and I was like, boom, boom, boom. Yes, I know this present tense. It's a beautiful Sunday and I should be out swimming in the pool, but I am studying. Been writing out flashcards all day. My tutor will be very happy with me though. I've also started to label everything around the house. In order to efficiently learn, I had to practice every single day for about an hour and a half. This even meant on my days off. Mi casa es vieja y grande. My house is old and big. Estoy estudiando mi español tarea porque yo necesito practicar porque Sí. Hace la gente en la fiesta? All I want to do is sleep, but I gotta keep going. I gotta keep doing the thing. 
So we finished uh, basically the first section mm -hmm. with the present tense. So next time, we're basically just gonna have a full on one hour conversation. And the whole purpose of it is for you to prove to yourself and to me, essentially that you're ready to move on, that you can take the challenge of the next tense. So, preparate. <laughs> Oh, shit. I have my first Spanish exam on Monday. Ugh. I needed help. Who could help me practice for this test? It's almost like I need a team of Latinos to help. Oh, yeah. Hours before my first test, and I have Julissa here. She's helping me. ¿Qué haces en el trabajo? En trabajo, en mi trabajo, en mi trabajo, um, Yo graba, gra, grabo mm -hmm. videos so, oh wait, sobre, mm -hmm. yes. I feel like you know what you're saying. Like you have it, you know what you're about to say. So I think it's just to stop second guessing yourself and know that like even if you say it wrong, whatever, you fucked up, but you still, you're saying it. So don't, don't do that, like spit it. Because I feel like that's the easier way to learn, and that's by fucking up. I asked Maya to go through the 12 fundamentals of the present tense, or the 12 fundamentals of the language in general, and she basically aced it. But she got like, let's say, like a 95, 96 out of 100. It was like minor stumbles. And then that basically to me said that she was capable of going forward into the past tense. Now we're learning past tense, which means everything changes. Stuff like, I ate, I talked to her, I went to work, and que lo que. Oh wait, that's not. As we go forward, this is, it starts to get heavy and complicated now because not only are we dealing with preterito, which has a lot of irregularities, probably the most, but we're also expanding on the vocabulary really quickly. So uh, this is the part where you need patience and discipline. I'm learning past tense and I'm really struggling with it. ¿Qué hiciste el fin de semana pasado? Um, the thing that's tripping me up is the fact that I am taking everything so slowly. En sábado, mm -hmm. yo fue, fui. Bueno, fui, definitely. Fui. There were a lot of things that I kept getting wrong because the endings had changed, the tense had changed, and I was just like, whoa. Coming up with the things to say right off the bat from the top of my head is really hard for me. And I think it's because I haven't been practicing as much. I have a lot going on. I mean, working a full-time job here, I love what I do, but it's also like I have to also fit in time to learn a language. I'm just like exhausted <laughs> and I'm frustrated. I think the self-doubt is setting in. We all have this weird darkness within us whenever we start something new, always telling us we're not good enough, we're not talented, we can't do it. Who do we think we are? I think right now that darkness is trying to creep up, I realize that this entire thing is not just about me learning the language. I have to actually like address the fact that I am afraid of looking dumb. It wasn't how fast I was picking it up or how my accent sounded. It was, can I get out of my own way in order to succeed? I sat down with Gariel and had a real talk with him. You have it there with you, but it's like there's something within you that's stopping you. That's the truth. You have it, because like you understand this. I talk to you in Spanish all the time. You hear me speak Spanish all the time. And what you're feeling right now is perfectly normal. Once you break that barrier and you be like you go right at it, I think you're gonna you're gonna get this shit down. Yeah. Hmm, that's good dad advice. Thank you. I love you. He brought up a lot of things that I was like, you're right, I I do that. So I knew I just had to do it. I needed to practice. This meant talking to my coworkers more. ¿Qué tipo de videos vas a grabar? Mi videos van a ser sobre uh, mi cabello, pelo, mi pelo, yes. específicamente <laughs> mi tutorial de cabello rizado, pero es muy difícil para mí porque <laughs> <laughs> yo trabajo durante la semana mm -hmm. y a veces Yo quiero hacer nada mm -hmm. por la tarde, yeah. Mm -hmm. Girl, I got, I got all that. Mayita, 
¿Qué es lo que tú buscas en un muchacho, en un hombre? ¿Te gustan los peludos o te gustan los hombres sin pelo? <risa> sin pelo, por favor. Sin no, pelo. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice little hair? Con pelo chiquito. <risa> <laughs> this language is your language and the way that you communicate like no one can ever take that away from you like you're trying you're learning so i'm happy that you're learning i don't think that you should ever give up i think it's so cool that you're like ¿Qué estás haciendo? Estaba cagando. Ew, Nani. <laughs> Estoy grabando. Oh. Qué vergüenza. Ay, sí, mija, pero con uno tiene que ir, tiene que ir. I finally started to feel more comfortable and confident in my Spanish. I started to sing in Spanish. Te fui sin que me viera. I even spoke Spanish in a better like video. ¿Y sabes que Jorge y Chena are getting a divorce? <laughs> no, pensé que todo sabía. <laughs> well, it's down to the end of my Spanish journey and am I fluent? No. But I'm okay with that because I thought by becoming fluent in Spanish was going to solve all of my problems. But it was more so about reconnecting with my culture and pushing myself past my comfort zone so that I could learn. It was an emotional journey. This Spanish journey is only the beginning. I'm excited to continue to learn and to fail because I realized in those fails and in those mistakes, Something beautiful came out of it. Gracias por ver mi video y espero que you liked it.